Welcome back to Photoshop. So today I'm going to show you a couple different ways to use the type mask tool inside of Photoshop. Now, presently I have the type mask tool selected. However, if you want to use the type mask tool, you can come down here and click on this little drop down arrow and it is nested under the type tool. So notice that normally we have the type tool here. If I click on this, it brings up the vertical and the horizontal. Horizontal is what we want to select. And we'll go ahead and do that. And that will bring up the type mask tool. Now, the first thing that we're going to do, though, is come over here and we're going to create a new layer. This is going to allow us to work non destructively. So we can put this type on this layer and if we decide that we don't like it or we only want to use it for certain aspects of our design, we can easily turn this on or off. So we're going to come up here to the rectangle selection tool. I'm just going to make a selection up here and all this is going to do is create a little box that we can put some type in. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this. So I'm going to go shift delete and that's the fill command. Normally you would just come up here, edit fill but we're gonna go ahead and fill it with a color white and bam, just like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mask tool and we're gonna come up here and I'm just gonna click inside of this box and it's gonna have some random words. Now what I'm gonna do is go ahead and add some type. So I'm gonna add depression and then I'm gonna hit command A to select it all because the size type, you need to have it selected. We're gonna go ahead and size it down so it fits a little bit better. And that looks pretty good. One thing I need to tell you, notice that the font I've picked, and, and I'm not trying to pick some amazing font, we're just trying to do something simple here. But I do have a big, thick font. If you have a skinny, little, thin font, it's not gonna really work that well, and I'll show you here in a second. So we're gonna go ahead and click off this and click on the lasso. You don't wanna move it, because if you hit the move tool, I'll show you what will happen. Moving the whole thing. Or if you click inside of the selection, it just moves that selection. We don't want to do that. We actually just want to move the selection. So if I come here, then I can move the selection and kind of center that where I want. And that looks pretty good. And then this is really easy. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to come down here and just click on this mask tool. And you can see it has made a mask out of this image. So it's showing everything. However, we want the opposite. So I'm gonna hit Command I to invert that. And now you can see we've got this white background. And then we're using the mask tool to make the picture show through from behind. Now we have this nice headline here and it's showing through the image using the mask tool. Now we're gonna go back a couple steps. There is a different way to do this. You could have done an inverse, which is command shift I. So we did an inverse there, and then I'm gonna make that mask there. And once again, it's doing the same thing, just a different process to get to the same point. And in this case, it's showing through once again. That's how you use the type mask tool to create sort of this really strong, bold headline. So let's move on to our next photo. All right, so the first thing that you need to do to create the erased text effect is to come down here, grab your text, and we're gonna go ahead and just click in that. Now I'm just gonna use the plain lorem ipsum in this case, and this looks pretty good, so we're just gonna click off that. I'm gonna go inside the letter and I'm gonna center that type. Next thing I'm gonna do is create a new layer, but with the selection. So when I hit Command J, you'll notice that it's created a new layer, but only with the selection that we had. So it's just that type, even though you don't see it, it's because it's just a selection. Now, the next thing that we need to do is turn this into a smart object. So we can come up here to filter, and then we're gonna come down to convert for smart filters. What this is going to allow us to do is to go back and change things if we need to and make this non-destructive. I'm gonna come out to this gray space on this layer, and I'm double click. And that's gonna bring up layer style. You could have also have gotten there from layer as well. Now, what we wanna take a look at first of stroke. So I'm gonna tick stroke and select it. Once I select it, it's gonna bring it up. Now, a lot of times your color by default is gonna be black. Go ahead, click on that. You wanna come in here and you wanna add a white color. 
So we're going to hit white and that looks pretty good. Now the spread is going to determine how thick that line is. So I've made it really big at this point. So you can see here, it's a little bit thicker, but we want just a little teeny line. So we're just going to make this so we can just barely see that outline. Now we have an opacity slider here. The more the opacity, the more you're going to get 100% white. What we want to do is just make this so it's barely visible. So we're just going to make that barely visible. Now what's cool is remember, we've, we're going to do this effect, but because it's non-destructive, we can always go back in and change it. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we actually wanted to make an, a second one of these. So we're going to make go back in. And I could have done this in the same panel, but it's just easier to show you this. So we're going to look for drop shadow. So in this case, I want to bring up drop shadow. Once again, ticket and select it. And you can see it's adding a drop shadow to our image. Now, normally this is on multiply. We want the color black in this case. Our opacity, we're going to be able to change. So as we lower that opacity, it's going to have less of an effect. And as we increase the opacity, it's going to make it blacker. So we're just going to put it in here around 60 to 70 percent right now and then the distance so the distance we have is going to create more distance for the letters and if we move it in or less distance it's going to have less of an effect now what we want to do is just do a small one in this case we also can control the angle that this happens so where as i move this the angle or the raised angle is going to differ let's come over here and just put it here for right now the way spread works is we're going to slide it this way. It's spreading that edge out. And if we go this way, it's making it in closer. And in this case, you just want to adjust it to give the effect that you want. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it there. Then we have size so we can slide the size. So it's really spreading that out and making this sort of soft edge. We don't want that or we can move it in. So I'm just going to make my size just a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and turn off. And now you can see this is giving us the effect that this text is now popping out, but still using that texture. Now, if we want to come in here and change this, let's say we don't like the white. We think it's either too strong or not strong enough. I can come over here to stroke, double click on stroke. It brings that up. And then what I can do is I can change the opacity so I can make that stronger or I can lessen that effect. So it's just barely visible. Go ahead and hit OK, and that's how we've changed it. Now, if you add a stronger or a thicker drop shadow, it's going to give it more of a raised effect in your image. But that's how to create a raised type effect using the mask tool. And the last thing that we're going to take a look at is a little bit different. In this, we're just actually going to create a heading or a headline. This is very simple. We can just go ahead and for good practice, hit Command J to duplicate our background layer but we don't really need to do that. We're gonna come over here. Now these are the Grand Teton Mountains, so we're just gonna call them Teton Mountains. And it's way too small, so what I wanna do is make my text much larger. So once again, we're gonna select that. I've got this big, strong font, big, thick font. And you can come in here, obviously, we can change this around and get something different. So I can scroll through here, and what I'm looking for is just kind of that Big, thick font. Notice how big, thick this font is. Don't really like that font, so we're just going to keep going. So we can come through here until we find any sort of a big, thick font that we like. And once we do that, we can stop and say we're okay. So we're just going to go ahead and use the one that we had. I think that's going to work fine. Now, I want a little bit more vertical height out of my font. So what I'm going to do is click on this little guy right here. I'm going to slide the character over. Now, what I want to do is increase that vertical height. So I'm going to come over here and just increase this a little bit so it's a little bit taller. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to move this off screen because we're not going to use it again. Next thing we want to do is go ahead and click on the lasso tool. We want to go inside the font and we need to move it. So what I'm going to try to do is create the mountain range inside of the text. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. Now, notice I want some of the mountain range to be low and some of it to be high. And this is just something you need to kind of play around with. So I could do something like this. And that looks pretty good. We're going to go ahead and just try this to see how it looks. And then we're going to come in here and just simply create a mask. Now, if I come in here and I turn this background layer off, 
So what we've done, we've taken a mask and put an image of the Teton Mountains inside of wording that says Teton Mountains. And so you know exactly what it is. And then I could take this and use this in my design however I like. So those are three different ways in which you can use the type mask tool inside of Photoshop to create some really cool effects. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave those below. And as always, don't forget to subscribe.